Let's take a look at our first problem. This one we will use the magnets for. What about 1 8 divided by 1 4 Mechanically, what do we do to get the answer here? Well, we take the 1 8 we change the multiplication, and we flip this becomes 4 over 1, and then we multiply. 1 times 4 is 4, and 8 times 1 is 8. So I have 4 8 all right? Now this is, can be simplified. I can divide both by 2 if I want to, but I recognize right away that instead of that, I just divide the top by 4 and the bottom by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I think the answer is 1 half. Now what does it mean uh, to when you divide fractions to get an answer of a half? First of all, back up to what does it mean if you get a whole number? If you have, for instance, the fraction 1, right, like this, and the fraction 1 fourth, and we're taking 1 and we're dividing by 1 fourth, it's going to go 1 times, 2 times, 3 times, 4 times. How many times can it fit in? It's going to be 4 whole times. It's going to give you a whole number answer. But this did not give us a whole number answer. We have a fractional answer. What does it mean? It means that when we do this division, it doesn't even fit once. It only goes half of a time. Let's see what that means. First of all, how do we build 1 eighth? If this is a is a hole, then if you think about taking that hole and cutting it, you can see this is exactly the same size. This one hole is exactly the same size. And I cut it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal slices, then one of these guys will be what we call one eighth. So I'll just kind of hang on to this. All right, so this is one eighth right here. Now one fourth is a little easier to visualize. I just cut it into one, two, three, four slices and keep one of them. So this is a fourth right here. So we've established that what we're doing is we're taking one eighth and we're dividing it by one fourth. So what we're trying to see is how many times will this thing fit in here? And you can see that it doesn't even go once, but it goes exactly half of a time, right? Because this can go half of what I'm dividing by will fit in. And so that's why we got an answer of a half right there. So anytime you get a fractional answer, it's just representing how many times can it fit in? If you get a fraction, it doesn't even go once. That fraction tells you how much of that thing will fractionally fit in there. All right, problem number two. Let's take a look at 8 ninths, and we'll divide it by 4 thirds. No more pictures, just cranking through it. 8 ninths, change to multiplication, and then flip. Make this 3 fourths. 8 times 3 is 24 and nine times four is 36, all right? So 24, 36. So th those are even numbers. I know that I can uh, simplify that. So I'll rewrite 24, 36. Now I can divide by two, but if I can think of the largest thing I'll divide by, then I'll save myself steps. And I know that I can divide by 12, and I know that I can divide this by 12. So 24 divided by 12 is two, and 36 divided by 12 is three, because three times 12 is 36. And so the answer is two thirds. If I divide by two, then I would just get something else and I'd have to keep doing it until I got down to two thirds, which in this case actually is the final answer. All right, what about three eighths divided by uh, two thirds? Same thing, keep the first fraction, three eighths, change the multiplication, flip the second fraction, three halves. Three times three on the top is nine, and eight times two is 16. So you get nine sixteenths. We cannot simplify this any further. So that is the final answer. Sometimes you simplify, sometimes you don't. All right, let's take a look at seven twelfths, and we'll divide it by two fourths. All right, so seven twelfths, again, the first fraction, just leave it alone, change to multiplication, and this flips over to four halves, so four over two. Seven times four is 28, and 12 times two is 24. Again, these are both even numbers, so I can uh, simplify that. So we'll write this as 28 on the top and 24 on the bottom. And what do I divide by? Of course I can divide by two, um, but I wanna divide by the largest thing. And I know also that both of these are divisible by four because 28 divided by four is seven, seven times four is 28, and 24 divided by four is six, because six times four is 24. If you divide by two instead, it's okay. You'll get something else and you'll have to do it again, and you'll get an answer here of seven, six. Now, this is improper, so let's go ahead and divide this. What do we get? Six can go into this only one time. Six times one is six. 
the remainder there is a one, and it's in terms of six. So it's gonna be one and one sixth. That's probably the best way to write it. You could write the answer as seven sixths if you'd like. All right, making good progress. Let's take a look at seven tenths. We'll divide it by three fourths. All right, what do we do? Take the first uh, fraction, seven tenths, leave it, change into multiplication, take this, flip it over to four thirds. Seven times four is 28 and 10 times three is 30. Now, of course, these are both even, so you can definitely simplify this, 28 thirtieths, right? And I know that I can divide by two, so I'm gonna divide the top by two and the bottom by two. 28 divided by two is actually 14. Right, 14 times two is 28. If you're not sure, you can just actually do the division on the side or just multiply two times 14, you get 28. And then 30 divided by two is 15. Same thing, multiply these and you'll get 30. If you're not sure, do the long division off to the side. But we get an answer of 14 fifteenths and that's the final answer. All right, we're actually almost done. Let's take a look at five, sixth, and we're going to divide it by four fifths. All right, five sixth stays the same. The division becomes multiplication, and then this gets flipped over to five fourths. Multiply five times five, 25, and six times four, 24. Now, this is an improper fraction, so how many times will this go in? Of course, it can only go one time. One times 24 is 24. And what's the remainder? 25 minus 24 is one, out of 24. So one and one twenty-fourths is the final answer. What does this mean? It means if I try to draw this on the board and divide it by this, it can go one whole time, plus a tiny, tiny amount more, it can go one twenty-fourth more. So that's a very small amount. So basically it fits one time, plus a little bit more can fit in. That's all that that really means. All right, almost done. Let's take a look at five twelfths, and we'll divide it by one fifth. All right, so then we keep the five twelfths, change to multiplication, and we flip this guy over to five over one. Five times five is 25, and 12 times one is 12. Now this is an improper fraction, so 12 times two is 24. That's as close as I'm gonna get. 12 times two is 24. The difference between 25 and 24 is one out of 12. So the answer is two and one twelfth. And that's the final answer. All right, I think we are basically done. Let's just round out a couple extra to give you a little more practice and we'll call it a day. Let's take a look at 5 fourteenths and we'll divide it by uh, 2 sevenths. All right, the 5 fourteenths stays the same. Change the multiplication, flip over 7 halves, and then we have 7 times 5, 35, and then 14 times two, I happen to know it's 28, but I'm gonna put 28 there. If you're not sure, go off to the side and multiply this and you'll get 28. So we get 35 28s. Now we can convert to mixed uh, right now, but I also realize that I can divide this by seven and this by seven. So 35 divided by seven is five because five times seven is 35. 28 divided by seven is four because four times seven is 28. So now I have an improper fraction here that's just a little easier to deal with. Let's divide it. Four times one is four, it can only go one time. The difference five minus four is one, and it's out of four. So we get an answer of one and one fourth, and that's the final answer. All right, here's our very last problem of the day, or of this topic. 11 eighths, and we'll divide it by two thirds. All right, what do we do? The 11 eighths stays the same. Change to multiplication, flip over to three halves, and we get 11 times three, 33, and eight times two, 16. So we get 33 sixteenths. Now, we need to uh, divide here. So 16 times one is 16. 16 times two is actually, I happen to know, 32. If you're not sure, 16 times two uh, is 32. Six times two is 12, carry, two times one is two, and three. So I know that this can go two whole times. 16 times two is 32. The difference 33 minus 32 is one over, then we have 16. So the answer is two and one sixteenths. So here we have concluded the concept of dividing fractions. 
the process of every one of these problems, no matter how complex or how simple, they were all the same thing. Change the multiplication, flip the second fraction, multiply. And we've gone through great lengths to explain why we're flipping and multiplying. So you're not just doing it, you know why you're doing it. But after a while, you just mechanically get into the groove of knowing how to handle it, and then you get all these correct. So I'd like you to solve all of these, and then follow me on to the next lesson where we're going to continue practicing your skills, but in this case, the next lesson, dividing mixed numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.